Hello, this is Lolly. Welcome back. I am going to work on my craft text project, design team project for the month of October. I can't believe it's October. Anyway, there we have had a couple of other blues in the past. We had denim and we had sapphire and now we have blue iris. So I'm going to put a picture right here up on the screen to show you the difference between the three colors and you can see which one is blue iris. I love it. It is more of like a periwinkle color, and periwinkle is something I adore. It's one of my favorite colors. What I did was I cut two pieces, and they are nine and a half by seven. And here's what I want to do. Um, Tonic Studios has come out with a stamp club, and they have new releases. It's stamp and die sets. They have a re new release every month, and they're in these really nice binders here. This shows you last month. Really nice binders with the holes, I mean binder pages with the holes here. And I took the stamp set out of this one so because I don't want to reveal what the new stamp set is going to be for this month. There we go, see. And But um, I do want to make a cover for mine. And so I'm going to put the two holes here. Use book rings because I can expand my collection by getting bigger book rings as time goes on. But what I want to do is I want to paint on this. And I have painted craft text before. I will give you a link down below under this video to when I painted this, which is a, a traveler's notebook cover that I made. Love it, very fun. So I'm not going to do all the mixed media background because I, I love this color. I just want to accent it with maybe some flowers along here. But as you can see how springy this is, I think I better press these first. So they're much flatter and it's going to make it easier for me to paint. The next thing I want to do is put some parchment down. I cannot find my... Uh, craft mat, you know, the non-stick Teflon ones, I can't find them. They're both missing. So I'm going to take this, which is just a natural color, and I'm just going to use some white and what is this color? School bus yellow here. I'm going to use these um, plastic crochet hooks. I like them because they have a flat bottom, which means you can easily use them for dot painting. Okay. So I'm going to let this dry really well, like overnight. So I did a couple extra layers on the yellow and I let this set overnight because I want to use my food ball marker and it's like kind of a roller ball. And I'm going to go around all of these areas here. Okay. Now, you can see that that just really gives it a whole lot of definition there, as opposed to this where the lines get kind of fuzzy. Okay. 
Okay. Now one of the reasons, oh, I really like that a lot better. Now one of the reasons that I wanted to leave this mostly blank is I was thinking that I would eventually put a label of some sort here to state which which stamp sets are in this set. You know, if it got too big and I might, you know, or I might want to make separate ones of these saying that they are, oh, I don't know, like holidays versus, you know, um, children's crafts or whatever. I wanted to kind of isolate and organize them. I could do so. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is spray this with a matte fixative. People always say, where do you get that from? Any art store, craft store, you look in the actual art supplies and get any spray that says it's a matte fixative. I'm just going to get a light coat and what that does is help set this food ball really well. And then I, when that is set and dry, I want to cover it with a, another coat probably of the Art Deco matte varnish, craft varnish. You can't even tell it's there. Just to give this a good seal and then we will punch holes. One more thing after looking at this is I do want to do my little swirlies inside here. It's so hard to leave this alone. I just want to play around a little bit more. All right, let's just give that a spray. Okay, that's good and ready. I just need to use this to trace my holes on the back. And I think what I'll do is go ahead and stack both of these and punch the holes at the same time. Okay, now with that punched, I'm going to go ahead and set the wide eyelets in here. Oh, how cute. Very nice. And I think I'll go ahead and do the same color on the back. Or I might just, on the back, I might just use something else. I'm not sure. Let's see. I'll use black. Now all I need to do is get book rings out and get this set up. I love these black book rings. I think they're adorable and I may have to get some in a bigger size because I like them so much. There we go. So now I have my beginning. Oh, now I have the beginning of my die sets in here, dies and stamps, and it will expand and I love it. Okay, so I have the eyelets in. I have it all put together. One last thing I decided to do, and I did this after the eyelets were put in, so it was hard to get stitches too close to this, but I decided to top stitch white all the way around this. And I think it gives it just the extra bit of oomph that it needed, and I'm so thrilled with it, and I love it. And I, it's gonna, I love that it's gonna be expandable, and I'm really happy with it. Make sure you check a look at this video right up here. And it's the beginning of how I, the part one of how I did this one here.